Okay, I'm gonna do another video here. Uh, I keep changing my stance on this on this virus. Um, I saw I saw a video that uh, was talking about um, the intricacies of how the virus works, and talking about that there's like a mutation. There's there's mutations now that are gonna make the virus even harder to do, deal with because. Um, it not only the mutations don't only attack the lungs, but they are can be transmitted um, via via fecal matter, bloodborne disease, so sexually transmitted as well, um, and affect the heart and the um, liver, probably the kidneys, um, and other other parts of organs. Um, the the um if you see these videos there's some guy called um is, is like um ninja nerd medical ninja or something some guy and he does these whiteboard things and he describes how the virus works in detail and shows like all the various attributes of just how it breaks things down and I watched one of those videos, and it was kind of it was kind of uh, sobering. But um, anyhow, um, I've had some thoughts, and the way they're talking on the news to guys like Bill Gates, um, they're spreading the same sort of idea that this thing is exponential. It is exponential if you always come in contact with strangers. It's the same sort of problem as um, these kinds of business ventures that people do. When they're you know out of work, they'll get join Amway or they'll um, join Tupperware and form Tupperware parties. And the only time you uh, can profit from such MLM pyramid schemes is when you come in contact with strangers. If you don't come in contact with strangers, then the business doesn't do very well. Same idea, same growth pattern. Um, this thing will only do well if you come in contact with strangers. That means you're a traveler. Um, people who travel um, will, great distances, will spread the virus. But the problem with New York City is, is it's highly dense. The city, and each person in that city is always in contact with strangers. So in New York City, it's the perfect storm. It's not the place you want to be if you're trying to avoid covid because then everybody can get it because everybody's on the streets. Nobody owns cars. It's all public transport, you know, taxis. Um, you're going to come in contact with surfaces that other people have been in a hundred times before, even in the same day. And so this is not the place you want to be for this kind of virus because um, it's going to grow exponentially, and it'll it'll do it in cities more so than it will out in the country. So in Texas, where I'm at, people are not going to come in contact with it in great density because you don't pass by a thousand people on the street, and most people own cars, so they're going to drive great distances to get to places, and they probably only come in contact with about a hundred people. It's a different sort of a situation that's the reason why um, the way they're talking about it is really kind of stupid is because they're only concerned about the cities and the thing is is that's where you don't want to be that's where it's going to have the greatest effect is in the cities um, for a number of reasons cities have flat surfaces they're man-made um, there is not a, a great amount of um, surface area in a man-made um, Unless you're, unless everything in the city was made out of radiators or or heat sinks, if the whole world, um, if all the cities were just heat sinks, they'd have a greater surface area than um, places in the country. But the country, you got leaves, you got grass, you've got uh, rocky surfaces, you got sand, you got organisms everywhere, and those, and who knows what those organisms would do to this virus? Probably just absorb it. Um, would they carry it on? It would. Would the um, virus do well in in a open air environment inside of a forest? It probably wouldn't. It probably does a lot better in environments where it's man made, flat surfaces, um, lots of stale corners, not much ventilation, 
I mean, this is New York City. New York City doesn't have very many restrooms, public restrooms. You've got what's the most popular popular public restroom in New York City? That is the um, um, the Central uh, Grand Central Station, and you, you got those bathrooms, and people are using them frequently. That's where it's going to spread, um, and it's because of the lack of public restrooms and such greed for space that um, that it's going to make people use the same space over and over again unless they stay in their apartments and never venture out but even if that's a, a worst case scenario um, in the country if you live in apartment complexes you're going to have more of a chance of coming in contact with somebody who has the virus than if you lived in a house that's out in in the country so what I, what I suggest to people that want to avoid the virus is go out and camp for two months um, because if you're camping, you've got lots of surface area everywhere. I mean, greater surface area. You've got leaves, you've got uh, grass, you've got, and you've got lots of little varmints and stuff that are going all over the place eating stuff. And um, some of them might, might not even be susceptible to carrying this virus. They might actually have a, an, anecdote, an anecdote to the, to the virus in the organisms and it may just be a matter of us finding where the the virus is not doing so well and that might be where our antidote or our, our solution to the problem is and that would be best to do that in an open air environment in the wilderness not in a closed environment that um that is um got a lot of flat surfaces a lot of dry surfaces um, also, when it rains, because of the ionization of the atmosphere, all the particles drop. That's viruses, organisms. That's the reason why, whenever you go out and you've you've got um, you've got allergies, you don't you feel clearer on after a rain because of the ionization of the air. Actually, the lightning does most of the ionization. I don't think you can just have the ionization with that um, without lightning, but. Um, the lightning produces the ionization of the air um, and makes everything drop. That's the reason why in the sharper image they were trying to sell those um, devices caught like the ionic breeze to try to put ionization inside of a room so it would drop all the ash, uh, cigarette ash particles. The problem with those devices is they didn't work all that well. And... I mean, not well enough to like actually spread to an entire room. It was like within the area that the um, that the device was, and people haven't had a whole lot of effect with it. I also read up while I was looking up ionization that um, you can kill all of the organisms in an in a uh, in a room or in a building if you can fill it with ozone gas, and uh, ozone gas is toxic to humans according to what I've read but it will kill everything in a building so that would be a way say in New York City if um, they had an, a really bad outbreak there to go around to all of the buildings and and uh, rooms and stuff um, or stores if you could fill it with ozone gas I don't know how hard that would be then you could kill all the organisms in there you wouldn't have to go around spraying all the surfaces um, anyhow um, I, I, I think a little deeper about things. The other thing is, is I think the researchers and all the doctors and stuff, they need to stop taking Adderall and Ritalin because it may, those are focus drugs. And it's possible you get so focused on coming up with a solution that you will ignore all other possible approaches to getting around it, you know. Um, uh, thus, thinking outside the box is not usually... A place where people go because they're thinking inside the box they're trying to solve trying to solve the problem within the human rather than solving the problem outside the human which is trying to reduce um, the chances of people coming in contact with the virus now I work as a bagger for Kroger and you probably think oh a bagger what what good is a bagger gonna be able to tell us anything I got a computer science degree I have a minor in art I was one of the guys who pushed the Blender 3D package early on in its development. I got a, a 3D animation award from Alias Wavefront. 
um, back in 95. I was one of the guys that was kind of selling Wavefront software. Wavefront originally was scientific visualization, and then they turned to animation because um, um, there was a lot of um, work made, being made in that direction. When Microsoft bought up Soft Image, they brought it in at ni in 96. That's what caused SGI to shit and um, to, to shit bricks and uh, went off and bought Alias Wavefront and all those packages and then, you know, tried to merge them all together into Maya. Uh, and then Microsoft made, uh, figured that they couldn't make any real money in the animation industry and then focused on 3D graphics technology and they tried to um, get SGI to help them develop a card, but really what they were doing was moving into direct 3D and um, uh, or um, ActiveX and all that stuff and uh, created game 3D game technology. But anyhow, um, see, I've been in a lot of various areas um, and it's really kind of strange because I've come in contact with a lot of the stuff that is in, being put into play in in this in this epidemic, and I'm starting to wonder if I'm in hell or if I'm actually on Earth, and I can't tell which one I'm at. If this is just a perfect hell for me, and uh, this is all a simulation, if I'm in a sandbox, and this epidemic is not, I can't possibly um, communicate these ideas to the world that um, the world is just necessarily very stupid compared to what I'm thinking about. And uh, it's probably the reason, is probably a good reason why um, a lot of the, you know, people that are, re if they're watching this video, it isn't real people, it's likely demons, and this is all uh, made up, you know. And I don't have a problem with that. But it, for me, the novelty of going through and actually communicating this information uh, is fun for me and that's what I kind of put forth is that even if this ends up in the very end just being kind of um, that I'm in a private hell and that I die and I go into some soulless um, location or something because my brain is thinking that way um, just by the statistics and the probability of all this stuff occurring and I see numbers that are statistically improbable. Those things uh, jump around my head and I'm like, um, this, obviously none of this is real because um, the way people are talking and the way people are just ignoring certain things, they're just not, um, if it, either they're just totally stressed and their brain is not working or they're, um, or they're taking Adderall and they're in focus drugs they just don't seem to be making wise choices or choices that sound, um, none of this sounds like common sense. None of it does. And, um, so it's like, it's like people are watching the news and they're expecting to get information quickly. And I tell them you need to be positive. You need to get some laughter, um, play card games with your kids, do things like that, and get off these news resources, the best thing to do is get into the newspapers because they're a limited resource, and the writers are going to have a longer time to decide whether or not the information that's coming out is correct. They'll be able to verify if it's correct. Their business model is different than it is from, say, Fox News. Fox News business models to keep you watching so they can sell advertisements to their, to their advertisers. They don't care about subscription because... Um, people don't really subscribe to Fox News. So where when you're there, you're the person that's being sold. Um, you're, their means of making money is by keeping you there to watch advertisements. So you don't want to be watching Fox News because their business model doesn't make any sense for keeping you well informed. Um, in newspapers, it makes more sense because you can subscribe to a newspaper and so to keep their s subscription, to keep their readership, they have to um, give you good information. If they give you bad information, you will drop subscription. So for them, it's two things. It's advertisers and subscription. 
And so it makes more sense to read a newspaper. The other thing with a newspaper is it's a limited resource. You can't keep reading from, to, from it all day long unless you're a very bad reader. Um, you will get through most of the newspaper, and by the end of it, you won't have any more to consume, and you'll be forced to do something else. But just don't go back to um, YouTube or to the news. I, I, I watch news from YouTube but um, I can't really find a whole lot of it. I find like a few stories and it really just seems to me like the things that people are saying in these stories, like whenever they talk to Bill Gates about the, um, the spread of the virus, he's like, hey, it's exponential. And I'm like, yeah, Bill Gates, you never use your brain at all. You're, you know, you may be the richest person in the world, but keep in mind that you were just at the right place at the right time when IBM picked you to make an operating system. If Gary Kildall had, had given them the time of day, it would have been Gary Kildall and it wouldn't have been you and you would have been a worthless, um, you know, they... They hold him up with high esteem, but the guy is not really that smart. Um, he doesn't, his company doesn't innovate. The only time they innovate is when they have competitors that are, um, that put out something better than them. That's typical of any kind of corporation is you wait around until somebody does the innovation and then you compete with them. That's the way Microsoft works and the way that they work. Uh, to make money is very simple. They just keep the file formats, the languages, and the language that is used to describe the languages and the technology different every time. You keep changing the language, people are going to have to keep relearning things, and that's how they make their money, is off of training people, off of keeping file formats different, off of not using object-oriented interfaces, because if you use object-oriented interfaces, um, it forces you to use inheritance and to keep things um, abstract and simple, which is easier to manage, but it's very hard to leverage if you're trying to change the, the, the file form or the language all the time. And that's how Microsoft makes their money, is not by innovating, but by keeping things different and, um, and keeping people dependent on them even in their current venture to put Linux inside of Windows so people can run Linux inside of a hypervisor inside of Windows is not a solution. That doesn't get you off the Windows platform, which is a pointless operating system. It needs to die. It's, it's already dead because Linux pretty much is taking over everything else. And Linux is basically inspired by Unix, and Unix predates Microsoft MS-DOS by about... Um, by about a decade, you know, and so what's the point in using Microsoft at all? Um, that and all they do is ever all they ever do is buy up other people's technologies. They don't make anything that's unique. Even uh, Steve Jobs claimed that uh, Bill Gates didn't have any taste, you know, and um, the he doesn't. Bill Gates has no taste. Um, the amount of money he's thrown at HIV research is less than a tenth of a percent of his total his total um, value as a as a um, business person. He's like got about ten to hundred billion dollars of worth to him, and he's only thrown about a hundred million at HIV research. Um, there are Christians that spend more money, uh, more of their money than Bill Gates ever did. You know. Uh, you have to spend about a tithe, that's 10% of your wealth, um, every time you go to church. And Bill Gates doesn't go to church. His wife, I would be, I would question if she even goes to church, even if she says she's Catholic. I, you know, uh, Catholics are not that great because they put, um, they put graven images before the Lord. Um, they, um, they're like some Christians that stick crosses in front of people so that they can say, I'm a Christian, but that's a, that's a crutch. That's them hiding behind the cross. They aren't really being, are they walking the walk? Are they talking the talk? Are they just putting that cross up there to let you know that they're part of a clique? You know, are you really being Christian or are you just part of a clique? Is it a crutch? Is it are you really Christian at all? Are you reading the Bible? Do you understand what it means to love God with all your mind, heart, mind, and soul? Do you understand anything about his teaching? Do you 
understand his value for people do you are you going to do that and i i for a good bit of my life haven't but i'm starting to see, look around me and say there are a lot of people around me that haven't either and it's i'm that's another reason why i think i'm in my own personal hell is that i'm coming to the realization too late that the world i've been around is not christian it's um people that are um they're kind of sitting behind crutches um vanity um a vain perception of of how to be you know it it's all it's all made up it doesn't mean anything and this virus coming out of the woodwork like this is um either it comes from god or it comes from the devil and uh you know the only way that a virus could ever be made is it has to be made by something that's um supernatural it couldn't have been made by humans or by man or by um any means i mean not even ufos or uh, extraterrestrials could do things of this nature um we're trying to learn how to uh, how to um back we're backward engineering dna we're backward engineering the how the neurons work in people's heads so we can create better artificial intelligence we're backward engineering stuff that wasn't stuff we created and then we're claiming um claiming uh, superiority or that we're going to solve problems and i think all we're doing is we're just putting uh satan on earth and uh he's helping we're helping to create an existence for him here on earth by um taking and cloning our um our organisms and ourselves our neurons for ai and cloning our uh and perfecting our dna um there's a good reason to, for us to have uh people who are, have down syndrome all those things because um it, it lets you exercise your ability to empathize people who don't empathize are the ones that are trying to fix the dna um, they, they're much equivalent to sociopaths or psychopaths. They may think they're doing it in order to avoid, um, diseases and death and, you know, fix the world's problems. These are the same guys that are working on AI. They think the AI is going to favor them and AI doesn't have any empathy in it at all. It's just going to be pure logic and pure logic is one-to-one -one with a psychopath that is more intelligent psychopaths are not naturally intelligent um they tend to prefer themselves they see themselves as the center of the universe they don't identify with anybody else but themselves they don't have a perception that there is a god in the world they are the god that's the reason why they are the way they are is because they can't identify with other people when you identify with somebody um when you have empathy um you identify with people to an extent that um, if they hurt, you hurt because you you're, a part of your brain tells you that um, they are like you. And it is what permits you to get around racism. Racism, racism is easier if you're not intimate with the people that you're racist against. Once you become more intimate with them and you become friendly to them, it's very hard to be racist. Um, so the thing is, is that People just, uh, you know, the news, when you watch the news and they start, um, they start taking somebody like Bill Gates and throwing them up on a pedestal. These guys are vain. Um, they're in it for themselves. They're not really going to, you know, they, they may be able to say, you know, do some prediction of the future. But I mean, how hard it would it be to predict the future if you saw a lot of diseases coming onto the plate? I'm not... I don't believe Bill Gates is any better than anybody else that they throw up on TV. All these guys are just, I mean, it says in the Bible that people look in high places for greatness. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that's in there. Um, and so that you're looking in high places for greatness is proof that you're doing it wrong because Jesus didn't come in high places. He came in a low place. God would choose to come in a low place because he knew he was going to come in contact with less arrogant, um, arrogant, self-centered 
uh, bastards, and which are at the top, and they're guys that are getting put in the news. And Bill Gates is one of those guys. He he doesn't do anything out of um, out of interest for other people. He claims to, but he tends he seems to be more self centered. Um, um, in the pa- in the past, in his business, uh, in the way he ran his business, he was self centered. He would come into every every um, he would come into every market, and he would figure out how to pretty much exploit it. And um, it was kind of raping and pillaging uh, little little um, towns, you know, for him. And every industry he ever came into, he screwed up. Um, he screwed up the 3D animation industry. There could have been a lot of uh, people could have done pretty well there. But, you know, what happened is I helped Blender. I put a ton to push Blender. And because um, the, you know, there were a lot of selfish people there too, you know, alias. And uh, they weren't going to permit me to get a copy of Wavefront so I could do 3D animation. It's fine. I didn't really need to be consider myself a 3D animator at all, but I pushed Blender, and now Blender has got 3 million users, and uh, Maya's got almost nothing. That's fine with me. I didn't I didn't become an animator, but uh, um, you see, the thing is, is the people who got Maya were um, they were focused on getting jobs in Hollywood, and it isn't in your best interest if you're an animation house to have um to have um shelf technologies be the center of your of your um business because if you bring your animators in and they use your technology they're going to um easily jump ship and go to another place of work if all their skills are tied up in shelf software but it's in the best interest of guys like Pixar to make in-house software so that the animators can't jump ship. Um, that would be the same for people who are in business that use Microsoft software. Rather than using Microsoft software, why not make your own software? Um, you, could make, you could put it in open source if you wanted to make it so that people could use their skills everywhere. But um, the other thing you could do is you could use really obscure um, software that uh, is bent towards your business and anybody that works in your business, they couldn't use their skills anywhere else. Um, they probably could if they used a lot of the same technologies, but in the case of an animation house, it's very easy for you to keep your animators because all their skills are going to be locked up in your, uh, in your technology. See, you have to kind of let your brain kind of go through all of the intricacies and all the, um, spaces of um of the of the problem rather than just applying kind of a, a generalistic view of how things are with the virus they're they're saying it's exponential because they got this they got this um they're using a a, a kind of a modeling they're they're showing that uh, that for every person that has the virus um they spread it to three others but they could also spread it to another three others and another three others. But the thing is, is that there's a greater chance that they can spread it to three people than it, than just one, as with the flu. And so it becomes exponential because for every person that gets it, they'll they'll spread it to three more. But that only means something if you're in an environment where you come in contact with people that are that are strangers, and that's more common in New York. Uh, in the country, you're going to come in contact with people you know, and so th- all those people are going to get the virus if you've got the virus, um, unless you come to the realization, or I mean, you will come in contact with maybe 20 or 30 people if, depending on, you know, if you were running an auto mechanic store, um, what's the chances of you spreading it to the rest of the people? in the town it's much less likely and in one month you'll probably come in contact with maybe um 10 or 20 people it might actually spread fairly well but it's not going to be as fast as it would be in new york because you're not coming in contact with strangers all the time um that's the reason why new york is just off the charts is because it's the perfect storm for for this virus um you don't want to 
be there. And it would be better uh, for, the, for the government, if they were smart, um, to tell people to go out and camp. Because when you're camping, you're in, as I said, you're in, you're in the wilderness. You're uh, around a, a greater surface area. You've got leaves. You've got, you got, um, you got um, grass. You've got really rough surfaces, kind of fractal-like surfaces. And um, so there's a lot of intricacies to them, and there's a lot of organisms inside of that. It has a greater chance of probably um, um, absorbing the virus and possibly getting rid of it than on flat surfaces like you, f flat on natural surfaces like they've got um, in, in places built by man. Uh, there are people that work in uh, retail that, um, this is a side issue, um, that have problems with uh, their feet. And the reason why is because you're walking around on uh, surfaces that were not designed to be used by, I mean, human feet were mute, meant to walk around on, on, on soil, on uh, grass, uh, and things of that nature, uneven surfaces. That's what your feet were designed to walk around on, not on flat surfaces all day. And that's the reason why people have so many feet problems with their feet. And because they have problems with their feet, the um, that causes the um, causes an imbalance in how the body is able to deal with um, those problems. Uh, and when you have when you break your leg, you come in. It, it great increases the chance that you'll put stress on other parts of the body in order to compensate for what you don't have. And um, that's the same sort of case. Is that uh, as your feet, as it gets harder to use your feet on a flat surface, you're going to start putting stress on other parts of the body, and it'll create all sorts of other problems and that's because we really are not designed to walk around on flat surfaces the virus is going to do well in flat um, unventilated corners stale corners in rooms because that's unnatural in 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 uh, the world the God created universe here on on earth there are no places on on the planet that are stale corners as sets for caves and where did this virus come from um, bats in caves and caves don't have very good ventilation they're stale areas it would probably be a perfect place for an organism or a virus to to develop um, over time i don't know how the virus got to, to be it's, they say it's rna based and uh, RNA means that um, something produced the RNA sequence. It was probably came off of some of some organism that produced an RNA sequence, and the RNA sequence is what's in the virus. That's what's being spread. So it's um, it's creating something that generates virus. It's not. It doesn't. It's not like DNA. It's it's something different. Um, I guess what DNA does is that it, it creates RNA sequences. Um, it, it, it can be used to create RNA and the RNA is used to create, um, organisms and, um, or create structures. And, uh, they say it's RNA based, this virus is. And so... I'm just thinking that the people in the medical community need to get unstressed. They need to watch puppy kitten videos. Um, that stress will let their brain come back online. It'll increase, it'll turn on their immune system. It'll bring back their t tissue rebuilding. Uh, they will be able to go to sleep and not wake up in the middle of the night um, stressed. Um, the other thing is, is that you don't want them when they're treating patients, you want to somehow um, make it less of a case that they're going to be seeing the same patient or seeing lots of patients in a day. Um, 
there is probably best that um, that these hospital clinics or whatever be out in the country, not in the cities, not in a dis dense building. The dense building is going to increase the likelihood that more people are going to get infected. Um, so the doctors, these hospitals need to be on large flat areas. They probably need to be in tents, not in buildings. Um, you probably need to have your your um, the ICUs in open air environments um, rather than inside of buildings. Um, the I know the 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 focus is try try to reduce the chances of being getting an infection, but um, you could probably do that well inside of um, an open um, air country i mean there were people that went to war and they went to um hospitals that were intense and uh got just as good uh service there as they do in closed in closed buildings inside of uh large buildings it may be the case that the best way to treat this virus is in an open air environment that is out in the country in tents um, we got such large surfaces, um, we got such large open lots around in the country, um, would that be a better way of treating this problem? We need people to think outside the box. We need people to flank the problem. We don't need people to go, be going straight to the source of the matter and attacking it there because it doesn't seem to be working all that well. We need to be flanking this. We need to be finding other ways around it. We need to be talking to lots of different professionals and collecting information. We need to take the Mayo approach to solving the problem. That is by having panels of people who have various different expertise and then having all those people talk about it. We need to be using VR headsets because we can't all be in the same area because we'll increase the likelihood of spreading the disease if any one of us to get it, to give it to the others. So in order to protect the um, ability for us to all um, be productive in helping each other, we need to not be in the same space. We need to be apart, and virtual reality is perfect uh, vehicle for that. Um, so you get VR headsets, you meet in all space VR, you talk about your what you found, your research and stuff, and the advantage with VR is uh, to um, to teleconferencing is in teleconferencing it's much harder for select individuals to go off in a corner and talk, and you can do that in VR very easily. So um, it's like you're in a, a virtual physical space. You can watch the talk. You can you can go to all the various sorts of um, of uh, presentations. You can go to the worlds where the presentations are, or you can go into a world or to a, to a closed off room and talk to a set of individuals, or you can invite them in. And even though I said Microsoft and Bill Gates and all this stuff were really bad, um, AltSpace, which they bought up, it's not their technology, it's AltSpace's. That AltSpace VR is a good technology. They need, need to also look at Minecraft and figure out some way to use Minecraft to create virtual environments for people to come and discuss things the way they do in AltSpace VR. They need to figure out some way to combine those two technologies together and create another volumetric-based environment so that people can talk about structures and architecture and, and, and then actually be able to be in a virtual reality space. And um, the problem with this virus is that we can't be together. We, we have to remain socially distanced. So we need to be in our, in our houses or I would prefer not apartment complexes because there's a greater chance to come in contact with something that somebody that's got the stuff. If you do, uh, in, if you are in such situations, probably, um, probably try to push a lot of air through filters into the apartment rooms so that the, uh, 
pressure inside the apartment is greater than the outside so then when you open up the door all the particles go flying out the door rather than and nothing can come inside um, it would go through the vent it would go through the the air conditioner that instead of um, pulling air from in the room and, and blowing it out it would be pulling the air from the outside and blowing it into the room to increase the pressure inside and push all the particles out. That would be the best thing to do. They need to be doing that if they're ever to go out in the country and put these in tents. They're going to have to do something similar to that. They're going to have to make the tents kind of um, um, kind of air, um, make them kind of uh, able to, to protect them uh, uh, airtight and push air into the tents so that it to increase the air pressure inside and push all the particles out. Uh, if you've ever heard about Los Alamos, they got a plutonium facility, how they deal with keeping plutonium from ever getting out into the air if it was to ever become um, available to the air is that um, they maintain a vacuum inside of the plutonium facility so the plutonium if it ever gets up into the air it goes into the vacuum it doesn't go into the outside so opening up of the door just all the air flows in from the outside constantly because there's a vacuum inside there's a maintained vacuum uh, um, inside of the plutonium uh, facility and I wouldn't know about this unless I lived in Los Alamos and I had a dad who was a nuclear physicist. So um, you know about certain things, all this information, you come in contact with it and you can make some decisions. But um, I made all this that I'm saying may be in vain. I don't know if it's going to have any effect. Um, also, for people that are wondering about how we're going to get rid of the Chinese government, it's very simple. Uh, I've said it a billion times. I doubt anybody's going to do anything about it. If this is hell, um, nothing's going to get done about it. But, you know, the novelty of just presenting information is kind of interesting to me, even if I won't have any effect. And that is um, that um, to eliminate a Chinese, any kind of government, especially a hated government, is to provide enough information about all of the relationships and the people that are in that government and also distributing uh, uh, the metrics needed to do facial recognition on those people, which I assume is not all that hard. I'm, I'm, I, I think it's probably just a set of numeric um, points, uh, some vectors, uh, probably a hundred vector, uh, vectors to help you rec or uh, vertices or something to recognize the various attributes that are important in doing facial recognition. That would probably be less than, I would assume probably less than a couple of kilobytes. In that you could probably put an entire record for every individual that's in the Chinese government in about, um, in about three, five, 10 K of uh, data. You could put, you know, 10 or 20K and you could stuff, easily stuff uh, several million people into a terabyte of data, then just provide it for free on copying on a torrents, put it on torrents and uh, anybody can get a copy of the database and everybody in China could get access to the database, uh, create applications that can uh, do the facial recognition and help them to do to find where these people are if we give them gps data stick that all inside the application with the data and you put it in the hands of people and the people that are in the government are either going to try to get away from the people fight the people or the better choice step down and find some kind of asylum somewhere and we could offer them asylum um possibly in a territory that the u.s has that uh, nobody is taking, that nobody is, uh, such as Guantanamo Bay. Maybe we'll take all of these guys that are in high power and throw them at Guantanamo Bay. We won't torture them like the ter like the potential terrorists that we had at Guantanamo Bay. We shouldn't have never done that because it was stupid. Um, Donald Rumsfeld went out and said, hey, you know, um, 
uh, all we have to do is put a, a you know get um, people to um, find the terrorists for and we'll give them a large amount of we'll give them ten thousand dollars if they can bring terrorists to it. what happens is that everybody was bringing all the less um, less important parts of their families uh, into uh, get the ransom I mean get the not the the the, the um, reward for bringing in terrorists and these were not terrorists these are people's these are family black sheets of, of various sorts of families that were being brought in. And those guys got thrown in Guantanamo Bay and they were torturing them there to make people in America feel better that they were going, that they're going to find out all the terrorists and eliminate the terrorists. This it's stupid. You know, the, the reason why terrorism works is because people are terrified and uh, the way to alleviate the problem is to avoid that psychological response by giving people a false sense of uh, of safety by putting people who don't belong in, in a Guantanamo Bay and torturing them so that you can uh, make people feel comfortable, false give people a false sense of satisfaction of being comfortable whenever you don't have a leg up on finding where the terrorists are. Um, that's the way our country works. It's all psychology. Even the thing with this virus, you know, people wearing these face masks, that's just like half of the reason why we're wearing the face masks is not because they work, but because we have a desire to solve the problem and we don't know how to solve the problem um, very easily. And by not having... Uh, something that we can do would make it really hard for us to get rid of the stress around the issue. And the better thing to do is just to come to the realization that that these masks are not going to have as much of an effect as if, say, we we're using CPAP respirator masks. Um, CPAP, they say that CPAP is not good for the coronavirus. What they really mean is, is that if you're a carrier then the CPAP is just going to make it easier for you to spread the virus to everybody. But if you're not a carrier, um, a CPAP device uh, pushes air through a filter from the outside. It goes through a filter and then it goes through this, the device through a tube into a mask and pushes it into your lungs. And the mask is designed in such a way that the only time, um, the only time you, um, the only time that, uh, um, well, the, the only time that, that, um, air comes out of it is, is when you exhale. Um, when you're, when you're bringing air in, it has a flap that comes down to keep air from coming from the outside and it comes through the tube that's from the respirator. And when you exhale, all the air that's in your lungs goes out that flap as well as the air that's coming through the respirator. So it'd be in the best interest for doctors and nurses who are treating people with um, COVID not to be using surgical masks, but using full face, um, full face uh, CPAP uh, masks that we already have because there are all these people that have sleep apnea and some of them are practically throwing away these devices with these masks. So why not use those instead of using surgical masks? We got an abundance of CPAP devices. Everybody and their dog has got that that has slap, sleep apnea has about two or three or four of these CPAP devices sitting around. Now why not give those to the nurses and doctors and give them kind of either a CPAP full face mask or something that's um, near in quality to that, um, put it on their face and they won't have any really good chance of ever getting the virus because, um, unless they're a carrier. And even if they were a carrier, um, if everybody, if all the doctors are wearing these CPAPs, um, they can't spread it to themselves because of the way that a CPAP works. It's only whenever you're, you know, it doesn't seem like people are thinking at all. I, you know, I have I can think with my ass better than I than these guys are using their brains. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, anyhow, but you if you go and you give all people information about the Chinese government, um, they're going to step down because people hate them enough, and people are going to go out of the woodwork just to to take them out. And the way that they have terrorized people by uh, by um, conspiring 
and going in and taking people out individually without them ever seeing them getting there is not going to have any effect uh, anymore because the people will see them coming. They'll have their cameras will be set up with apps that um, do facial recognition and they'll be able to see the conspiring um, hordes that would come in and take people out. And we could work in the opposite direction by finding all the government and spies and stuff that are inside of China and basically putting the friggin' fear into them. And they're going to step down because they know that um, if people see them, if people can do facial recognition on them, there's nothing, there's nowhere they can hide. And um, if they're really evil, if a lot of people recognize them that have gotten out, or have come to the realization that these people were not A1 and, and doing bad things, those people are going to be dead. That It won't even matter if, if they could seek asylum with us or not. If they can get out of the country, we could probably give them asylum, but um, uh, they need to know that if we can put stuff like that in there, then they're not going to survive, and they need to step down now before we do it. Um, because they're the, because the Chinese people are going to come out of the woodwork and absorb them. They're just going to they're going to get dissolved by the people that hate them in their own country. Um, but to do the same thing for our country, we wouldn't have any effect because people here and people in the rest of the world don't really hate our officials as much as people hate the Chinese, especially in this epidemic. It'll make it a lot easier for people in the world to dissolve the Chinese government because everybody hates them now um, than to d dissolve the American government and or to dissolve the French or any of the other kinds of governments that exist in the world. So this makes more of an, uh, this is a more strategic to getting rid of the Chinese and the Korean, um, North Korean government and any of the, the kind of more evil governments. If you can spread complete information about all the people that are holding spots in those governments, then they will step down because they know they won't have a chance of competing with a group of people um, that they are, you know, potential terrorist people that they can't even identify. Because that's what makes terrorism so effective is when you can't identify the terrorists. And when you give enough information to the world on how to um, take out a government, um, the people who are going to do it are going to be like terrorists. that. They're not going to know who they are, but the people, but they'll have access to the information. They'll know who they're after. The people they who they're after won't know, won't see them coming. And if they try to leave or vacate their post, um, they're going to be on their own, and they're going to be surrounded by people that will have access to the data and will be able to take them in either jail them up or kill them. And that's how you pretty much fix the problem with getting rid of the Chinese government. It's very simple. And I'll tell it to the world. But the thing is, is nobody's going to listen to me because this is all fake. This is a sandbox. These are demons. This is hell. And um, it's just novelty. It's fun to throw it out there, but I kind of doubt that anybody's going to watch this video or even be concerned. And if people say I'm crazy and they think that uh, this isn't hell and all that, that's fine. But um, I'm still going to do it for the novelty of just, you know, having these ideas in my head. It makes it easier for me to throw them out and then kind of not own them. And so I'll just stick them there. I'll give people little hints on what they need to do to prepare themselves for these fires. But likelihood, I'm going to get the virus. I'm going to kill my parents by giving them the virus. They're over 80, and um, but I'm not, I'm not affected in any way. The reason why I've got such a po positive outlook is that um, I'm kind of being, I'm kind of facing the inev inevitability, um, according to just the statistical improbability of seeing the numbers that keep saying to me things like I'm going to hell or I am in hell. Um, that while I'm alive, I'm going to be as positive and happy as possible. And, uh, I won't, I don't have any, um, illusions that I'm going to make it to heaven. I'm, I'm, I'm just doing things, um, 
I'm doing, I'm just doing things to, um, pass time. This is just passing time for me. Um, it's fun. It's novel. Um, I'm not doing this to make money and I don't care about money. I'm socialist and in the way I prefer, uh, safety nets for people. Uh, you know, it's either, either this is something that I'm supposed to be involved with, or this is just something that, uh, is inevitable that this is something that's going to, um, be very difficult for anything to fix because I won't have any effect on it. Um, I know of solutions, but what's the point? Um, uh, the whole world's going to die as a result of this virus, supposedly. But if my information means something and I'm not in hell, at least I've got something out there. It's kind of like, it's kind of like investing in something and then not knowing if, uh, if anybody's going to buy it or not, you know, uh, if it's going to make money or if it's not going to make money, if it's going to go somewhere, um, it's better just to put the information out than to be concerned with the acceptability or the receptive receptiveness to the world. Um, it may be that this is a sandbox and that these are demons and that, all of this world that I'm seeing isn't as intricate and complex as I think it is, that it may just be a uh, simulation. And that's what I'm starting to think, is that this is just a grand simulation that I'm in, and, and none of this is real. So.